When you start your business, no one ever prepares you for what's in store. So finding someone else who just gets it is sometimes the thing that can keep you pushing toward that big business goal. We're turning our Zoom coffee chats into a weekly unfiltered podcast for online business owners. They were so good, we always wanted to record them and repurpose them for content anyways. And that's on being a social media manager. I'm Jessica Sheehy. And I'm Madeline Dygan. And this is Hashtag Managed. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Managed. Hey, Madeline, how was your weekend slash week? Because we're recording this podcast so close, you guys, to the next weekend. But how was your weekend? (laughs) It was good. It was good. I came back from traveling. I was back home in Indiana, which you guys... I am hoping listened to that episode and heard all about my chronicles of falling through an attic. (laughs) Um, But no, it was nice. So I got home on, what was it, Friday? Or no, Sunday. Why did I say Friday? (laughs) I got home on Sunday and I got home at a decent hour. So you know, had time to unpack, unwind, and Brent and I got to catch up on not just one, but two episodes of Masters of the Air, which um, I feel like when we first started recording this year's, uh, honestly, yeah, when we first started recording this year's podcast, um, it had just come out mid-January or late January, and I, there were only like three episodes, and I was like, oh, And then we later realized, like, oh, one gets released every Friday. And there's only, I think, nine. And I think we're at six now. So I I know I'm going to be heartbroken when this series is over. And I'm just going, I'm not going to know what to do with my life. Just kidding. I'll obviously be reading more. And Mm -hmm. I actually did, I forget if I had finished The Housemaid I think I did finish it, but I started the second one that I was telling you about, Mm -hmm. um, Frida McFadden, right? That is her name? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, So yeah, I'm almost done with that one. So all in all, it's been good. It's been a good week so far. I, I do need to report to the audience, though, to you lovely, lovely listeners, that the universe is on Jessica Jessica and I side I swear to you because earlier this week when I was at Trader Joe's I, you know it was just again this was Tuesday I was getting my groceries for the week and I don't know if I just sometimes feel like I have that and again I I like my energy like I have to believe that people like open up to me and just whatever so we we get chit chatting the checkout girl and I get chatting and she was like and I was wearing I was wearing a cute outfit I was wearing a blazer and stuff like I looked professional but if you guys like like it it's all a facade anyways um she's like oh like what do you do and I go you know I own my own social media business and she goes oh that's so fun my friend does that for Glossier and I'm just like I'm sorry, what? Did I hear that correctly? And she's like, yeah, like she's out in LA. And I'm just like, so of course, you guys, I obviously inform her about the podcast, how Jessica and I, this has basically become a fan page of Glossier. Hopefully we get in contact with this girl, this woman, <laughs> I would die, have her on the podcast. I will die. It's going to happen. Like, it's going to happen because it's going to happen. Why else would the universe put this this person yeah. in our lives, you know? Right. Yeah. So it, it all happened for a reason. And one thing that I think is so cool is I feel like being an online business owner for so long, you know, there's so many businesses and you always think to yourself, like, how did they do that? How did they make that happen? Like, Yes. Not necessarily like tell me your secret, but tell me how you did all the things that led to here. And I feel like we've always shown that about our social media management businesses. So now I feel like it's really cool that we have the podcast and like we're guys, we're just voicing these things literally on the show. 
like we record more than we do planning meetings just so you guys know like we do collective planning meetings with everyone live here (laughs) on the podcast so I just feel like that's really cool how that it you know like we're thinking about all these brands and we're talking through some cool things and we're like yeah we need this social media manager we need that and then the universe is like wait a minute hold on this is who you're going to talk to today, Madeline. And here we go. So I feel like that's really fun. And that's just like that. I know this is a podcast, so definitely a different medium than social media, but that's so cool. Like, it's just, it's so cool. We do cool things on our phones. (laughs) I, yes, no. And I, I even told her that I go, I go, honestly, I would just love you to pass this message along to her, but like, she's doing an amazing job. Like, honestly, like groundbreaking stuff. And I told her, I was like, honestly, my co-host and I want to have guests like her on to hear how she got there. Like, because Mm -hmm. let's be honest, if Glossy came knocking on my door, you guys, I'd be like, yeah, Mm -hmm. sign me up. Like, you're my only client. Okay, that, yep, Mm -hmm. we're doing it. We're doing it. Well, I shouldn't say that. I would want other clients, but mm, I get when it's like that big, I would Mm -hmm. probably sell my soul. That, That sounded really weird. Anyways. How was your weekend, Jessica? Uh, oh, man. My weekend was really good. I'm trying to think what I did. So I did go to Tampa, which was really fun. I'll get into that in just a second. But before I went to Tampa, my husband Ryan and I did something on Saturday that honestly I was a little nervous about because I've never done anything like this. And I don't know why, but I put it under the bucket of like, a group class. It's not a group class by any means. So he's probably <laughs> listening like, why are you building it up <laughs> in this way? But there's something about like doing things, fitness, like in person. I don't know. I'm such a routine gal that when I'm like out of my routine, I'm so shaken up. But anyway, we went to an assisted stretching place in our downtown. And I I don't remember how we exactly planned it. We probably planned it the week before. Like we're really like impulsive people in that way. And so we were talking about something and we were like, you know what? There's one in downtown. Like they do like an introductory offer that was really great. We were like, we should both go do it. So we booked it for Saturday and we did it back to back. And I have to say, I made Ryan go first because I was a little apprehensive about what it was even going to entail. So I made him go first so I could literally watch (laughs) what they did to him. And then because I think for me, I love to work out and I've been working out more than I probably ever have since I don't want to go too extreme, but maybe like high school me. And but I'm not flexible at all. Like I'm not flexible. Like, and I think that's one reason that I like always struggle with group classes because I'm the least flexible. And I know this is a thing, like I'm not the only one in the world who deals with it. Anyway, we went to this assisted stretching place and it was so good. I did not realize how tense I was until the end of this 50 minute session. And of course my husband loved it. And he's like, we're doing the membership. This is exactly what we're doing. Like he's probably going to go way more than I I will go, but I will go. I did love it, but oh my gosh, I'm like I'm shocked at how like tense I was and just like I don't know, it's so, it was so weird, but it was so it was so cool. Have you been to one of those before, Madeline? Yes, and I've been trying to get Brennan to go as well because he I'm definitely not the most flexible person in the world, but Mm -hmm. I'm definitely, it's one of those things where I started, I've done yoga on and off since like high school, but Mm -hmm. just last year, I really decided that I want yoga to be a part of like, actually Mm -hmm. have a yoga practice. So, and just because down here in Charleston, the yoga community is honestly amazing, like amazing Mm -hmm. and just very welcoming, at least again my experience but I love going to yoga classes that are assisted where they can help you get into the deeper stretches because I'm just like don't go away like no mm-hmm. no please and like bread it like so I'll come home and like I'll ask when I'm like push down on my back be- like because I like want you to help me mm-hmm. like get into that deeper stretch and he's just like what am I doing and I'm just like so yes I've been to one of those classes mm-hmm. and like Again, I want to get my own husband. So maybe if I tell him Ryan, because again, I obviously talk about you and Ryan. Like Brendan knows, like like he is your friend. 
even though we've never met in real life. And so I was like, Ryan did it. Like, why aren't you doing it? Like, you need to do it. Ryan's doing it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, of course, Ryan will be like, you know, the least social media person I know will be like, wait, I influenced someone to do it. But it's one of those things, too. It's very like classic. Like I, I'm always the one in the relationship who's like, let's do something new. Let's do this. Let's try this. Mm-hmm. We don't do it. Ryan suggests it. We do it. He's like, this is amazing. This is so cool. I'm like, I suggested this six months ago. <laughs> you could have mm-hmm. had less back problems six months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, has, always has to be their idea. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that probably is how I did get us to book the assisted stretching really quickly because I think it was about a week's time. So it was one of those things that I led him to believe (laughs) that he was booking this for us. But it was so it was it was so fun. And that was that was great. And then um, and then let's see after that was Saturday. And then, yeah, I went to Tampa, which was fun. Just a really quick like a really quick trip. Um, my sister's on spring break. So I selfishly was like, I too could be on mm-hmm. spring break. I work <laughs> a flexible schedule. Yep. I can work from anywhere. Uh, but if I'm honest with you guys, I did zero Zooms. It was Good. so nice to just not like to, to really not work. And it was one of those things where I I get in the habit, I think, of like I really tie my productivity to I need to be on my computer, on my iPad, on my phone. And to be honest, I probably got as much work done in those three days just by doing like light admin, like different small things here and there um, than I probably would do like at a day at home. And so it's really eye-opening for that. But it was great to be in the Florida sun that I desperately needed and just missed. So that was that was great. Um, and of course, fun to see my sister and see her friends. They were in town for spring break. And yeah, then I flew back, which we're almost to the weekend already. So that's another thing to look forward to. So, um, oh, but since I I spent a couple of days on the beach, I got back into my reading kick. That's just all I needed was to sit on the beach. Yeah. Um, and so I started reading again glossy, which I have a lot more left than I anticipated. Like I was only halfway through when I stopped. So I do have a lot left. Um, I will say it was like a slower read for me, like to read on the beach. So that was the other thing. But I finally got to a really good part in the story that now that I'm home again, I'm like, I'm going to read it. Like I can like power down my computer for the day. Like I can knock it out and I'll be good to go. Um, But I did start and finish an anonymous girl. I can't remember who the author is. I need to like, I need to look it up as I'm, as I'm talking. Um, I read a book by, it's like, there's two authors. I know that. Um... Let me look it up really quickly, but it was really, really good. So it's by Sarah, and I'm probably, guys, I'm butchering both of these names, but Sarah Pekinen, I'm so bad at name pronunciation. If you guys are <laughs> Sarah fans, you probably know who it is, but she um, co-wrote it with Greer Hendricks, and it is so good. I just finished it last night, and it's a very much like – a Frida McFadden, like psychological. And I'm trying to think what else do they, did they write that I loved? I need to look it up as well. Um, But it was such a good book to like get back into a reading kick. And I really liked it. I'm looking up. Oh, okay. The Wife Between Us. Have you read that one before, Madeline? No, but I'm adding these to my list now. Okay, yes. I would – oh, both of them are so good, but The Wife Between Us was so good. So I read The Wife Between Us maybe last summer, and that one has so many twists and turns that I love it. I need more than one twist in a book. (laughs) Well, I don't, but, like, when it happens, I'm just like, this is so good. And so, honestly, when I was, like, reading this book on the beach, I'm, like, you know, I'm talking to myself. I'm, like, reacting. My (laughs) sister's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm reading, you know? (laughs) (laughs) I – I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one who does that because I for sure will like sp- like I'll be like what are you doing? Mm-hmm. What are, like don't 
don't open the door again right. like movies yeah <laughs> but i'm just like yep or i'm like you're dumb you're yeah. what are you doing and i'm like you're ooh, 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 ooh. oh i love that okay that would be such a good like ad i don't know if that's for like kindle or something but like a bunch mm. of people in a movie theater but there's no screen and they're on their kindles and they're just like all like screaming <gasps> yes do you want to know what book i'm that's i I'm going to read it next because I saw the movie trailer. The idea of you, it has Anne Hathaway in it. Oh, and um, yes. this, uh, I mean, the man is quite handsome as well, but like Anne Hathaway, I, again, like her bangs again, cause I have bangs now you guys. And since I'm like still learning how to style them, but I'm just like, I think this is my forever haircut. And Anne Hathaway is just making me where I'm like, she looks so, I think she's like, Mm-hmm. almost i i should probably look it up but i like i know she's in her 40s and i'm just like you look mm-hmm. so good yeah so good and yeah. also just like her style i feel like a lot of people have been talking about her stylist and like seriously whoever mm-hmm. her stylist is i'm like can i have them because yeah. they're amazing yes okay anyways but yeah, yeah that's next on my list well, okay i need to add I, that because i'm that person who i want to read the book before i see the movie but like yeah. i love i do yeah. love yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. Okay, yeah. No, I need to read that book. Okay, I'll add it to my list. Maybe I'll read it next, actually. Because yes, book I, well, actually, club. I'm gonna glossy because I'm feeling good. But then, yeah. Oh, yeah. Book club. We need that. <laughs> Look at us reading the same title at the same time. <laughs> right. I love. I love that for the podcast. Yes. And you can. And you too, audience, can join along. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, I know we're going to talk about something that's super timely. Well, timely to this week, but Mm -hmm. it's still relevant. It's happened a few times since you and I have been social media managers for all these years. Uh, But before that, should we dive into our segments first and then then we'll get into it? Yes. So let's start off with the water cooler segment this week. They ask, what did you do? Sorry, <laughs> let me. <laughs> what did you do to up your game and be able to charge more or land a high ticket client? Hone in your current skills, learn a new skill, increase your prices. I hope mm. you had the right dialect after those were like question marks. So, like, hone in your yeah. current skills, question marks. Yes. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll start because I think mm-hmm. for me, there and this is something that honestly I know so many other social media managers talk about this. I know I don't know social media management business coaches talk about this, social media manager courses talk about this. You probably have seen this all the time. They're always talking about do this and do that to land the high ticket client and I think it is BS. Mm-hmm. Like there Cringe. is no one way that you can land a high ticket client. When I think about past high ticket clients that I've worked with and current high ticket clients I work with, there are big differences in how they came to me and why they hired me and in so many different ways. So I will say, I know that's super vague, but, and you're probably like, no, Jessica, I wanted an actual copy and paste (laughs) template to get it. It is trial and error, but I think this person's on the right track who submitted this water cooler that, you know, when it comes to being able to charge more and land those high ticket clients, figure out what your specific skills are as a social media manager. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It could actually be really, really simple. Like the first thing that always pops into my head that one I know clients struggle with and will pay good money for is content. If you're really great at content creation, or maybe you're really great at content editing, or maybe you just have a creative eye and you can creative direct your clients on how to create great content, or you know, maybe a mix of all of three of those, like that is something that's super special that clients will pay for. So I think that is something that clients will pay for things that they feel they lack themselves. So oftentimes it's content, it's time, or maybe it's like the strategy to get them where they want to be. So I think that's just something to get specific on, you know, what 
is a sp- specific lane that you really like to lean into in social media management and lean into it. I think, you know, there's that's the other part about it too that makes me sometimes cringe when I see people talk about how to land high ticket clients because you can do it as a freelancer, like a solopreneur, you can do it as an agency, like you can do it with like a VA on your team, you can do it in so many different ways. You can do it in different industries, regardless of what people say. There are tons of industries who will pay high ticket client prices. And so it really just get, gets down to get specific with, you know, what you can do. And, you know, there are times where I will, I'm, I'm trying to, 2024 me, when I'm sending proposals and custom quotes to people, um, I'm trying to be really good at sending higher quotes. Um, that's one thing that I've always struggled with as a business owner. I'm like, well, they told me this. Uh, they told me this. This is their budget. This is this. This is a limitation. This is all these things. I send the high quotes and I've sent several high quotes so far in 2024. And they have, most of them have all been yeses. I don't think I've had a no. They've been really slow yeses because they are much higher than the quotes I've ever sent out before. So that's one thing to consider. Don't immediately knock someone down because they didn't reply right away. Like if you're asking them to invest like several thousand dollars or whatever you think is a high ticket price for you, they might not say yes right away. Like they might have to ask someone else in the business or, you know, talk to their accountant or anything like that. So give a little bit of patience, but price yourself higher to get that for the high ticket price because I think you're not only giving a better service, but you're just giving a better experience. So I think the price tag just needs to reflect both. Yeah. I the only thing I I, I agree with all of that too. And adding on to what you just said about, you know, where it's almost like their pain points where I want to say this in a way that doesn't make people like come for me. So for instance, let me use myself as an example. Ever since starting my business, how I would, I believe that my like secret sauce to getting higher ticketed clients was my graphic design background. And like, cause again, where it's just like, sure, again, you may not offer graphics for your clients right now. Or maybe you're honestly just using Canva templates and like those are your graphics. But what I would do is like, again, with my graphic design background, sure, I use Canva and sure, like I'll use a lot of Canva templates to like kind of inspire me. But a lot of my graphics that I make are original, like they come from my mind. And I oftentimes will use like Adobe, the Adobe suite. And so, and that's what draw, drew a lot of people to me in the beginning was because that's what they were like, oh, they saw the impact of like, oh, that stops the scroll. And so I feel like, you know, if you do have a graphic design background, like tap into that and, you know, like really like sell that as a, you know, you're included in your services. And same with like, think about like where you really do enjoy your time. And so like, if you really do enjoy analytics, like to me, again, that is, that is a moneymaker. And some one, another tip maybe is go on LinkedIn, which it's not that helpful, but, you know, kind of see what, these companies like type in like social media coordinator, like whatever your title. And this, I feel like this goes back to a few episodes ago that we talked about the different types of titles that you might do or, you know, call yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but like go on to LinkedIn and like look at the – I forget what tool specifically, but I know for a fact LinkedIn has that um, tool where you can compare – um, salaries, especially in whatever area you're in. But again, ha- have that be a meter for you too. And like Jessica said, like we're six years into our business, six plus years into our business, where it's just like, we're still like trial and error. And like, mm-hmm. I do believe both of us, it's funny because it's so timely because her and I, Jessica and I were just talking about um, like negotiating raises, like again, in a mark, like if you were in corporate America, but 
I think you should always, honestly, you are your greatest advocate. Like you should be negotiating your pay, even as a freelancer, as an, like as a business owner. So, mm-hmm. you know, like it is a rough world out here, y'all. Like, <laughs> so like, you know, like it, like inflation is real, like, and you and I, we all know that listening to this. So yeah, you should be increasing your prices. Mm-hmm. without a doubt so again I hope that helped that, that helps yeah yeah I know that's that's great advice and I think sometimes too like we get so like sometimes we're so closely attached to the work that we do that we don't really see the value that we uh, like right away like we don't mm-hmm. see that immediate value that we bring to clients and you know we might come from that like graphic design background or, you know, we're really creative and maybe we know that, right? That's the Mm -hmm. kind of work that we do every day, but we're not being like super specific with like what we're doing. Um, Like for example, one thing that I, I I think I talked about this on last week when we recorded, but I've been filming a lot of TikToks. I'm actually happy to say I have a ton of TikToks for my personal. I just don't have any time to post them. So I'm like, good problem to have I'll post them Mm -hmm. next week because guys I'm tired so I'll post them eventually (laughs) um but good problem to have but I last week was once I finally got I think maybe it was like the day after that we like recorded I started filming like more content and editing it and I have to say I have not had more fun editing or creating or editing content in a long time Mm. and I'm like you know what I'm definitely gonna post these because I'm like really proud of them and you know excited to lean into that but also it's just been so fun like I know I'm creative because I you know I I'm in the work I'm in the weeds all day long as a social media manager but creating something that like no one has any expectations for like no one's waiting for me to send it to them for approval like (laughs) nothing and I'm just creating I'm like this is so good like I'm like pat on the back. I'm really creative. <laughs> but, yes. So it's one of those things we get so attached to things. That sometimes we have to take a step out and do different things. But yeah, no, I love that advice. I think that is one way that you can definitely work your way up into working with high ticket clients. And honestly, I want to say too, I don't think there needs to be like, don't put any pressure on landing mm-hmm. high ticket clients because I will say and um, I'd love to hear like your point of view on this too, Madeline. But when I am talking to new leads, I actually like to bring in a mix of clients who are lower ticket, maybe like strategy or consulting, because I actually really like consulting, but I also really like the bigger picture, like management as well. So I personally like to bring in like low to mid to high clients. One, I think it keeps things really fluid and like the revenue that's coming in. I'm not like, okay, I'm working with X amount of high ticket clients. If two leaves, there goes like almost half of my income. So that's personally why I like to really like mix things through. And then of course, I like to throw in a little passive affiliate income in there as well. That's nothing crazy, but like it does do a little bit of like padding in terms of the revenue. But I like to just keep it. So again, you you can have multiple high ticket clients. You can have maybe one or you could kind of do it like I do and have a good mix, but definitely don't put any pressure on it because we're all just kind of doing the best we can and bringing on like low to mid to high ticket clients when, you know, when they're the right clients we want to work with. No, that's literally advice I wish I had when we when I first started my business mm-hmm. because I truly believe having what led I can tell you guys pinpoint the time in my life where I hit burnout in my business and that was when I was managing six managing Mm -hmm. captions creating the content research you all know (laughs) yeah six accounts by myself Mm -hmm. by myself I was crazy. Like who does, if you are listening and you are doing this, I want to hug you. I literally want to hug you and be like, don't do this. Don't do it. Like um, again, maybe, but again, by yourself, that is a lot, Mm -hmm. a lot. And maybe you have systems, but I can tell you, I did not Mm -hmm. like, sure. I was using late, sure. But like to be like, basically I had six 
people inside my brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be like, here's one idea. Here's another. Here's another. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So no. And like, even now, like that's where I'm like, I'm clearly living in my Dwerma. I think that's what like people say, like you're yeah but like where I'm like truly like thriving because yes I I'm like you just like consulting I think is honestly what I always when I first started my business I knew I wanted to get to and I think I'm finally getting into my confidence of being able to even sell that as a service itself, because I think in the beginning, you and I were talking about this at the offline too, where people would look at our age when we first started. Mm -hmm. And even though we, we, we really didn't know what we were talking about, a lot of the clients we might have been attracting, like they still viewed us as babies right out of college, even though we were growing up with social media, like we were, we are social media. Like, yeah. Why did you believe us? Like, hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. And so now fa fast forward, I'm on consulting calls with people and they're like, asking me about these like because I just I do more of like a marketing consulting like digital yeah. marketing consulting yeah. because you know sleep is real and how could I not like yeah I get too passionate I'm like wait a minute we're gonna do all these things Same. You know? like Same. this is what we're gonna do I'm like Same. I just increased your marketing budget and your marketing team I just 10x everything across the board but hey you want 10x results here's how, we're, how here's how you're practically going to get those but yeah. It's one of those things where now people, clients will ask me questions like that it starts, you know, we start conversations and then they implement and it like generates so much money in their business. And I'm like, wow, you know, but it's one of those things like it, it's just, it's wild. And it comes, it comes down to experience. And I think if I could go back and give like 2018 me advice is to, which is something that like this one piece of advice I would never follow, but it, it is patience. Like, mm -hmm. be patient. I've never been patient my entire life. That's just something about me. And <laughs> it's one of those things that I I just always set really, like, big or quick or maybe sometimes unrealistic expectations for myself. Of course, we can – that could be a topic for <laughs> another day. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a lot mm -hmm. of conversations around all the, you know, things that I need to have going on right and perfectionism and people-pleasing. And anyway, I digress. And it's one of those things where – I would just be patient because the best lessons that I feel like I have learned in business, I feel like I've learned them myself. And I'm not to say, it's not to say that I'm a know-it-all and I know all the things in business because I, like I learn things from Madeline and even like my team every single day, like from my clients. And, but until I can actually go through and like fall and get back up, and fall again and get back up like that's when I learn it so for me it would definitely be patience so okay I would love to know now even though we're going off topic Madeline <laughs> well, uh, no but I, I love this for us like because I really like I really hope and I do think this message I just hope this and this podcast lands on the ears that it it needs to because <laughs> I think Gosh, there were so many times when I first started my business. And again, luckily I had Jessica, but I feel like even when we first started, we're like, which is so funny because I've always looked up to Jessica, like where it's like, even though like, I know we've always been on the same, like this is collaboration at its finest, but I would just be like, oh my God, like she's like killing it. Like, you know, but I think in the beginning, I'm going to get to my piece of advice. But I completely agree with the patience because I think in the beginning too, again, this you're trying to when it's when you're by yourself, you're trying to figure out your systems, you're trying to market yourself, you're trying like, and again, as a social media marketer, you also have to be the email marketer, you have to know like your website and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think I would look at because I am a very big picture person, but I also do know how like the steps to get it get there. But in the beginning, I got so overwhelmed. And so for instance, like, for the first how many years, like really did, yes, I had an email list, but wasn't like sending out consistent emails, because like, my mental capacity 
could not, I could not do it. And so like, that's why I'm getting excited like this year where I'm really leaning into email and like, I'm excited to get like, you know, it's like, it's just fun. Like, so that I think would be the one, my one piece of advice is like, always have fun. Like, maybe that's really bad advice. But I think why I'm saying that now, and honestly, after this episode comes out, I probably will have like other pieces of advice. And Mm -hmm. it'll thought idea that will be a cute little carousel reel or that I'll do but um (laughs) where I think the years leading to my burnout because what we do is so much fun and it it is amazing that we get to have a flexible schedule where you get to go see like Mm -hmm. I just took that for granted I felt like oh my gosh because I have my own business I need to be working like Mm -hmm. hustle 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 so people think they they don't ask me about my little business Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) you know like how's your little business going where I'm like no I'm building an empire Mm -hmm. okay yeah um yeah I love that and I so but that and give yourself grace because seriously like yes just know like as veterans like some of the stuff that I'll I feel like I'll at like in our group message I'll be like oh did you know this? I didn't know this. I, or just things like that, you know, where yeah, we can all learn from each other. Like we are. And that's what, again, why. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. No, I love that. I think that's such good advice. And yeah, that's one thing that I definitely leaned into. I feel like I said maybe this in a couple episodes ago, it's, it's ringing a bell, but like this year, like, I feel like I've always been grateful for my business, but you know, I don't know if I've ever told my business that I'm actually yeah, yeah. for, you know, for it because it's one of those things like I was in I was in Tampa at the start of this week and like I was on the beach when typically I would be sitting like working and you know I'm like actually on the beach <laughs> eating a pub sub. I don't live by Publix anymore, so that was like the highlight of my trip. <laughs> um, but it was one of those things that it was just, you know, it's one it it's the small things that, yes, I love, like, I love working and I love, like, all of the clients that we work with. And, like, we do some really cool things. And it's one of – it's just – it's cool. So just know that – and and I, I know Maddie and Madeline kind of said, you know, this can hopefully land in the AirPods of the right person who's mm-hmm. listening. But one thing that's always my goal because I know I try to be super cautious with the content I'm consuming – like, just know that Madeline and I have really pure intentions for this podcast. I'm sure you guys by now have guessed because we overtell that every time we <laughs> say anything. But I think it, you know, it's something to say because, you know, there's so many people who use social media to create a falsehood for business. And, you know, like Madeline said, when we were starting out, like she was like looking over at like, oh, wow, like she's so successful. And yes, like I've found success. I'm not going to downplay that. But I mean, there have been times where like, you know, middle of the day, you're just, you're crying. You don't know why. <laughs> like you're up till like yeah. him. You're, you're doing it. Like you're, you're skipping a meal. Like things happen. Like business is so crazy and no one ever prepares you for it. Like, I think no one, even people who start businesses and, you know, you read their memoirs, you know, it's like, okay, like, okay. And I, you know, I get it, but no one ever really shares that. And so I think there are some creators on social media who do a really great job of being super authentic. So I love that. But I also, I think that's also why I really love podcasting. It's so Mm -hmm. vulnerable in the best way, because if you told me to go on Instagram stories right now and say these same things, I would probably not say any of it because I would freeze up and be like, um, I don't think I can do this, but something about put me in front of a microphone and I'll share my life story. So I guess it's kind of the same way like of me on a Zoom. So that, you know, again, gives you guys a glimpse into why (laughs) we decided to go this direction with the show this year. So anyway, um, I feel like I'm just going to be on a chatty tangent. Like, I love no no but like I also the I'll this I know we got we'll move on to our next section or our next segment but oh my gosh the amount of times I would cry my first probably year and a half of owning my business I seriously I remember I think 
I need to find my old journals. That's one thing I'm so pr- – I feel like maybe I've talked about this, but I honestly need to bring out my journals. And if you don't journal right now, that's just – again, I feel like it's kind of cool to, like, s- like read the like where you were when you first started. And, again, maybe it's a Swifty in me because I'm just like, could you imagine, like, the di- – what? What and if and when Taylor Swift, like, releases her journals? Like, oh, my – Oh my gosh, I just dropped my AirPod. Hang on. But it, it's not a mic drop moment. It's an AirPod <laughs> drop moment. Yes. But um, seriously, I remember, I think, journaling where I was like, will there ever be a day that I'm not like crying about like owning this business? And I can, I can honestly say like, like yes but I I still for sure cry there are still days but definitely not as often maybe probably once or twice a month now you know a healthy cry I'm also that girly who likes it like Brennan will be like what are you doing like a walk to remember is like my favorite like good cry movie so I like what and like when I need a good cry I'll watch it and he'll come to be like why why do you do this to yourself I'm like sometimes you just need a good cry yeah, no, I agree. Okay, and any Nicholas Sparks movie, like, I will turn on, and actually, I'm going to call Ryan out. I'm sorry if he's listening. I don't even know if he probably makes it this far, but he loves a Nicholas Sparks movie, and so, but he loves the movie, and I'm just over there, like, just losing it, and he's <laughs> like, you're, I'm like, you're not human. <laughs> I'm, like, bawling yeah. my eyes out. I know exactly what's going to happen. I've seen the movie 72 yep. times. Oh, but yeah. Every oh, time, yeah. it just gets you. It's like, oh. I didn't realize it in that point of view. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that. Um, but no, that's so, so good. So should we dive into what's been on our feed? I feel like it's probably pretty similar to each other because mm-hmm. it's a season of influencer trips. And Tart and Bora Bora is taking over – my feed in the best way because I really love to see everyone's POV from the influencer trips, from the influencers who are there to the Tarte team, to Mm -hmm. Maureen Kelly, to the influencers who were invited but turned it down. Like, thank you. I've seen a lot of those videos (laughs) that are letting us know. Um, And also to just different like consumer POVs and marketer POVs because Mm -hmm. it's all different thoughts. And I love that. And I think it's so funny because influencer trips, you know, Tarte definitely takes the cake in terms of very extravagant, luxurious trips. And they do their part in what they're doing. You know, they're not advertising in other traditional ways, right? Like they didn't run a Super Bowl commercial. which is millions and millions of dollars. You know, they're not doing like other forms of like advertising. They're doing influencer trips and that's the way that they're marketing. And, you know, they do other marketing as well, but that's their main source of their marketing budget. Their budget? Yes. (laughs) Like 100%. Yes. And it's one of those things too, where it, it works. And it's Mm -hmm. so fascinating to see that people don't agree that it works, but the fact that we're talking about it, it works. (laughs) Well, and I even saw a few um, videos that, again, it, it kind of our PR background where it's like some of the TikToks I saw, they're like, this is what like they're they should be donating money. And like b- basically they were throwing shade at Tarte for throwing this expensive marketing trip. But what I found funny and I feel like their marketing team knew knew that this that that could be a uh, uh could happen so if you look at like their instagram and some of their top pinned posts is literally them being like look at how we give back and even on the trip like they like um with the puppies and stuff where they're just like they they do donate they do give back and honestly like yeah um why am I drawing a blank on the owner's name? You literally just oh, said Marie it. Kelly. Yes. Like she, like her story in general to like, she built this from her blood, sweat and tears. So like, I'm so, like, if you are one of those people listening who like, are like, mm, it, don't agree with the tart trip. Like I respect, we can agree to disagree because to me, I'm like this woman, like, I'm just like, I applaud her. And like, to me, I'm like, I'm not going to tear her down because like, 
serious and again if you are unaware of like just like how she has built her company from the ground up like look it up because it's amazing yeah yeah her story is incredible and I think I I agree exactly with everything Madeline said. So one of my favorite podcasts that she's done is she's, if you guys haven't listened to it at all, you should listen to it. But how I built this with Guy Raz, she does an episode going into her story and it's very emotional. So of course, you Mm -hmm. know, you know, definitely listen to it, you know, through and through, but you know, she has an incredible backstory and she's someone who's gone through so, so much. And it's one of those things where, you know, people get torn down for Mm -hmm. one thing. And, you know, she has gone through a lot. So, like, I know her first husband, he died during 9-11. And that's one thing that – yeah, chills right now. That it's one thing that, you know, it, for, for someone to go through s- such loss in, 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 in 9-11 being such a pivotal time of our, of our history and then to, you know – everything that she's gone through and you know how she's like found love and how she started tart and just the whole company's history it's actually like really really a fascinating story and now unfortunately a lot of people really take the whole turn in terms of you know the the influencer trips you know do this do that and it's like to madeline said they are but it's not enough and i think that's the point it never will be Mm -hmm. um and and I think some people just have that mindset of it. But, you know, when it comes down to it, when, you know, Tarte starts releasing their next products over the next couple of months, I mean, we're all going to be posting, look what I just got on TikTok shop. Like I got this new Tarte XYZ. It it works. It And it's, it works. And I did see, um I did see a TikTok that um talked about the data of 2023 because Tarte last year went to was it 2023 or 2022 where they went to Dubai with Alex Earl? It might have been last year. I think it was last year, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I think that's too soon. But um, but no, I guess, <laughs> you know, time flies. But um, but that was such an extravagant trip as well. And, of course, so many, you know, exciting things. Grab your popcorn happened during that as well. And – but they're – their sales just absolutely skyrocketed last year. And it's a direct correlation to brand trips. And I think that's something that, you know, goes without being said. So many brands do brand trips. They do them in different levels. Like right now I follow a couple of influencers. Tell me. I'm like, I want to know. Drop some names. So I follow Danielle Carolyn. Mm -hmm. um, And she's on the Skin Fix um, Aspen ski trip which Mm -hmm. I love that. And so that's one thing that seeing like the content, which is funny because she's, she's from Tampa too. So I feel like that's why I love like, Mm because when she's home in Tampa, like she's like, she's home home and it's literally like the town I'm from. So it's so funny (laughs) because it's not in Tampa, but anyway, um, but so it's so funny to see that, but to see like a creator, like on a ski trip and for, of course, for that, um, like even um, uh, I follow, Sydney Adams, also Tampa Girly. Okay, you guys are really wow. my content is <laughs> really mm-hmm. I follow other influences influencers as well, but my OGs are of course um Tampa gals. But um so Sydney Adams went recently went on a Sol de Janeiro brand trip. And what stuck Ooh. out is she went on two. They went to I hope I don't get it wrong, but I think they went to St. Lucia and then I think they went to either Colorado or Park City, Utah. They went on a ski trip and I can't really remember specifically where, but I thought that was really cool because it was like, obviously like St. Lucia and I hope it's St. Lucia. I hope I'm saying that right. But, you know, very tropical, like Sol de Janeiro, like, you know, great products for, you know, like beach days and all those things, but their new products, like on a ski trip like that was just also cool as well so it influencer trips are oh. are just you know they're it's something that's gonna happen another one that we didn't haven't talked about is free people just had theirs in costa rica too oh yeah yeah because obviously like avery went on that one and the bora bora mm-hmm. one and i'm just like yes mm-hmm. Because again, I I love these trips too because I do like to be exposed to different um and that to me I applaud um these brands when they bring 
in influencers for from honestly like where it's like still their target market but maybe like i have not heard about them seen them um but again like it's that common theme of like your for sure target audience just different culture different backgrounds Mm -hmm. whatever um yeah so i really enjoyed again with tarts even where i was i can now i can't remember the influencer but i I, when i tell you i went down a spot like i was binging their content i was just like oh yeah i like this okay i like you follow Mm -hmm. again now i can't remember but yeah yeah Yeah, no i i know what you mean exactly i think most i i I, there's definitely okay we can you know elephant in the room there have been brands in the past tart who (laughs) who (laughs) curate brand trips and they do it just you know they they make them exclusive and no one Mm. wants that in a world that is craving inclusivity and so Mm -hmm. that's something that I think most brands are definitely more aware of now especially in 2024 which is great um, because their consumers are all walks of life and so it's something to you know to really speak to that but I I love that because I feel like I I I feel like that's probably influencer trips might be the way that I find new influencers because clearly like I follow a lot of Tampa gals, but uh, <laughs> but I do love finding like other, like other girls who are creators and maybe they live in other parts of the U S maybe they have different backgrounds, different cultures. Um, but it's just, I can find a common theme, right? Like, cause mm. I typically like to follow people who are around my age, maybe, you know, possibly married as well because I can't relate to the dating content these days. So like, I, you know, like I love it. I do like, but at the same time, like I can closely relate more to people who are married. Um, I also like, I love creators who are moms, but probably, you know, probably more on the newer mom side of things mm-hmm. because like, I'm not there yet, but I know mm-hmm. I will soon. So, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately I'm probably not following a creator who has like multiple children because I just, I can't relate. So it is cool to find new influencers through trips. No. And okay. I have a side tangent relating to the dating content that I feel like you'll laugh at this. So I because this was on my feet. This was just on my feet like yesterday. So mm-hmm. this how how fitting. So I, for those of you who don't know, I met my husband Brennan on Bumble, and I was like an OG like Bumble honey. Like when I just I stand for Whitney Wolf and Bumble and everything about that company. Like love love mm-hmm. love. But obviously I'm married now. Well, this girl created this TikTok and it was on Bumble, and she did the like a theme of um guess who got the second date and so how she did she set up her camera or maybe it was a ring inside her apartment and after each date like you like again you as the audience had to guess like which like based on her reaction from this date like when she was calling her friends like or just like texting it was so cute and so clever and I was talking to my friend Kaylin on the phone the other day who we went to college together and I'm just like you know what I regret almost every day I was like I regret not recording my dating life when we were in Chicago because like literally it would have made from some good stories funny very relatable Carrie Bradshaw type moments Mm -hmm. and then I was like hang on I was like maybe I need to create a series Again, you guys heard it here first. A mm-hmm. series about Mar- and again, I need to try and convince Brennan to do it. But um doing a series and relating it to Bumble where it's like but marriage because we are a success story and I feel like it- and she was even like Maddie, you really should because like people want to hear these like Bumble success stories and I just feel like Bumble even wants to hear it and it's just like just nobody has really done it so I'm like okay I'll do one for the team just need to figure out a way to convince my husband that this is how we're gonna get rich you have to (laughs) he has to think it's his idea yes right 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 okay so yes yes I love that I love that no that's so good but that would be so good because like you said so many people 
we hear we love the you know the failed date stories and all Mm -hmm. of that but like we also love a good story so if it's a success story of you know from like you know matched on bumble to like married in real life and now here we are i think that that would be really good so (laughs) yeah this is just this is guys this is how we just create our own content ideas we just decide to (laughs) for an hour it's actually our brainstorming session where we're like is this a good idea yeah girl okay yeah we're gonna do it yeah no I love that I think that's so so funny but okay so almost part of on our feed was disrupted when we dive into obviously our title for this week we'll give it away but we have to talk about meta being down the great instagram and facebook and whatsapp we can't leave them out outage of 2024 (laughs) and i'm just glad we all really made it through but i know because madeline and i have talked about this inside of our slack channel but i was really happy that it happened and i love when these apps are down because Mm -hmm. you know I like a good vacation, even if it's a good 90 (laughs) minute to two hour vacation. I like it. An actual break, like in your day. Yes. No, and Jessica knows, like I, in our Slack message, I was like, I'm just going to be honest with our audience where it's like, I literally was in meetings all day and had no idea that it was down until obviously afterwards. And when I tell you guys, it was like a breath of fresh air that I, in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I finally, I think have, again, knock on wood, but like dream clients who don't freak out. They're like, oh, Mm -hmm. Madeline, no, like would tell us. And again, like all my stuff had already gone out, I think for the day, really, um, that I wanted it to, where I was just... Mm-hmm. And I'm like just, but let's say I let's say obviously if I hadn't been in meetings all day, I would have had the same reaction Jessica had, <laughs> where I was just like, okay, what are we doing? So, and I always every time after an outage, I always you know it's good funny social media content. Like I like I'm gonna laugh, and of course the I applaud X for the funny. Um, tweet they were like we all know why you're here and it's like it is so true a same with the email where it's like the email marketers come out and they're like oh you need you mm-hmm. need a list which is like we all know but- <laughs> yes <laughs> it's just like but like I do think these outages actually make clients and business owners they're like oh they weren't joking like when social media marketers do tell you where it's like you know don't put your eggs in one basket like Mm -hmm. this is why this is why yeah yeah absolutely and so you know this one was only for a little bit but honestly a couple years ago there was one that was like a good majority of the day and that was and you know most of the content that I share I typically share in the mornings anyways Mm -hmm. typically when this happens, it's morning for, you know, meta. So in PST, so typically I'm, I'm kind of done posting for the day. I'm not done for the day, but done posting <laughs> for the most part. You know, it's one of those things too, though, when it happened, I was kind of in the middle of some small like admin things. So I was looking at a couple of things across a couple of our channels. And then I'm like, wait, I keep clicking on Instagram and it's down. I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, this is like really bad. It's like, okay, now I know I have a really bad habit, even though it is for work, but I'm just like, I can't can't process it that I can't get to Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, let me just just highlight it. This highlight get updated. I'm like, wait, no, you can't actually physically look at it. But, you know, it's one of those things too, where if it were to happen and say it did happen, like, around I don't know it's like 6 30 in the morning like our time and then it lasted most of the day like it and, and that's happened before and so I think from that experience like it if a client came to me and they were genuinely concerned about the health of their business <laughs> for for a post to not go up or a story to not go up or something to me, I would have other questions around mm-hmm. all the other things that are supposed to be happening in the other marketing side of the department. So that's one thing to really like consider as well. Now, of course, if Instagram, knock on wood, were to not come back at that point, that would be another conversation that 
we would do an emergency press conference here on <laughs> hashtag manage to talk through. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that's something that is most likely not going to happen at all. Um, it's definitely not going to happen like the email marketers want us to think. But they do have a point where, you know, having an email list is super, super important because if it did happen from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., what if you did have a new product launch or what if something did happen or, you know, maybe you have a store or a salon or something and it's like, you know, Instagram's down, but we're open till five. You know, it's like, how do you communicate with people in that way? So that definitely makes sense. But at the end of the day, a post can wait to the next day till things are back up and running normally because that's the other thing too like if I did have posts that were scheduled maybe for the afternoon or at night I might not have posted them because I know sometimes like you know they're tinkering behind the scenes and they get it up and then wait it's down again and then it's like up and down again and it's like wait what's actually happening here and so I would just rather not play that game of can I post this or not and put it off to the next day. So it's, you know, it's one of those things that it definitely, definitely happens. And I know inside of our like Facebook community for hashtag managed collective, so many people were like just concerned. I mean, as we all are, right? Like, was I hacked? Did something go wrong? You know, all of our like biggest fears as social media managers get unlocked within seconds. And then finally it's like, okay, Instagram and Facebook are completely down. So it's just one of those things that just, it happens. And yeah, I just, I look forward to the break. So <laughs> yeah, no. I, I get, yeah, I, I just, I love memes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would love to know. I saw one, it was, you know, like papers flying everywhere. It's like currently at, you know, Meta HQ in California and it's like papers flying everywhere, like people running around crazy and then of course other people are like do you think they are or do you think they're just like kind of sitting back and seeing what people are doing so and I also like I would use this six or if you guys didn't it's also a great time to have like almost like a health check like a TikTok health check where it's like you know where if you've been wanting to get a client on TikTok or like, and maybe not like, okay, like this is, again, it's a strategy. You could seriously, and like, we we're talking about the numbers earlier, like the money where it's just like, you know, maybe you have a client right now who would benefit from being on TikTok where it's just like, but you're not managing their TikTok right now where you could be like, Hey, like maybe we consider this in Q2, Q3 again, where it's like, you're like, not, cause again, you have those clients, at least I have and have clients who it's like I'll say that and I'll be like yeah let's do it right away and it's like hold up mm-hmm. we gotta like actually come up with a strategy like a a different strategy for this different platform but um because threads was down too right because since it was yeah. with meta yeah, yeah. I imagine and something that I found that I sorry this is another side note because obviously this is just one of those episodes that we're just going on our tangents and I'm not mad about it. But so obviously I still check. Okay, no, here's a question for you, Jessica. How often do you check X or go on X? Business and personal, like again, business and personal. Because do you, like you guys are still on X, right? Because like the buzzing blonde technically is technically but like we're really not putting any content at all over there um honestly like probably once every six months like I really go on there at all anymore like once I kind of just like once it really like changed and Mm -hmm. I just kind of wrote it off and yeah I haven't I haven't been on in so long I mean Tuesday was like the first in yeah 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 so I I would say I when I definitely get it on it get on it once a month at least but I'm I feel like the what leads me to x is maybe an article that I read where it like links to x or whatever Mm -hmm. and so anyways this um what I want to say it was probably like last week I was on x and I just started scrolling and something that I like now it's just interesting where I'm starting to see some 
where I, I'm just interested in seeing the businesses who are still using it. Like, honestly, from a social media, like, there's a few social media agencies that are on there right now that I find, I'm like, ooh, like, you really do have an X strategy. Like, I'm just kind of like, yeah. I'm like, honestly, I'm curious. Like, I kind of want to see their numbers where I want to be like, do you guys actually, like, are you guys wasting your time? Like, yeah. again, and maybe it's not wasting your time, but like, I'm just like, ooh, that's interesting that you guys are marketing still on X to me. Yeah. And again, there's definitely businesses who like could benefit from marketing on X. Again, I would definitely say it's more male dominant for sure. Um, but yeah, I just found that interesting. And okay, another quick okay, see you sent you sent a funny we're going we're going I'm gonna share this tomorrow on this is gonna be a Friday series on our Instagram, just so you guys know, but I'm going to just get it and approve it, but I'm just gonna do it. Cause, <laughs> but like I wanna share like tidbits from our group chat, like mm-hmm. on Friday. Oh, yeah. So like, okay, okay, so she I did, I did get mom's approval, guys. So <laughs> anyways. So um Something that I thought about recently that I feel like maybe this could be another podcast episode or whatever, but like us talking about male, mar- like dominant marketing, because something I found, so I've just, it's, it's full on sport, like hockey season, which side note, like I am a hockey fan. Like I do enjoy watching hockey. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Same here. Yeah. And now that I'm into certain types of hockey books, I think it's funny because, again, Brendan was like, why are you – like, I've always been interested in hockey, but I just think it's funny, like, where it's, like, have – um, what's the series? I don't know. There's a hockey series, and if you guys can't – the girls who get it, get it. Anyways, um, I've started to, like, listen into more of the podcasts that he listens to as well as watching. He Again, Brennan is big on watching podcasts, which just mm-hmm. kind of, like, we're, like, again, we're starting to download, like, we are, so that you can watch our facial reactions, <laughs> you know, you can mm-hmm. see my bangs. Like, obviously, I'm posting right. to Instagram as well. But anyways, like, Pat, the Pat McAfee show is Brennan's favorite, and mm-hmm. honestly, I I meant to tell this. Okay, Harmony, this is a note for you too. Where this would be my dream. This would be this is I'm putting that out into the universe where we like hashtag manage I get out oh how it would work. But like ha- us to have a studio in where it's like you get to see the producers behind hashtag manage and like the team behind hashtag because like they also like on Pat's show like you see their reactions and it's just funny because sometimes like they'll make fun of Pat and it's just like where it's like commentary so basically it'd be like our entire group chat but like Mm -hmm. you see it so anyways where I was going with that though is I just have started to and maybe again this is all psychology where I've started to pay attention to like the ads and the marketing and I'm just like I want to do like an entire like because I'm like I kind of want to bring these like their type their social media person on the podcast because I'm just like mm-hmm. how you like I applaud them as well because I'm like you guys are doing a great job and same with like Barstool and just like yeah. in general like even like the hockey t- like or just the sports teams in general like their social media managers um like mm-hmm. how they're getting creative with like the sidelines and just I'm just like it's yeah. fascinating but obviously like I do mainly female dominated like that is who I'm normally marketing to like I again I think too where it's like I would I would not be opposed to getting a client who is like I would love that type of challenge too Mm -hmm. yeah so any listeners just know (laughs) hit me up yeah no I I think that's so yeah I I love the different like perspectives of it because I think there's Mm -hmm. you know there's something to be said like there's there's create creativity looks different. And I think as marketers, we just love when other marketers are kind of doing their thing, even if it is for a different industry, for a different product, different, whatever they're marketing, different audience. I think it can be really fun. So no, I, I love that. I think that's cool. And yeah, I think that that is just our group chat alive would that would be like probably that would be daily episodes level, you know, like I know. Well, and no, exa- no, and exactly like again, I th- feel like that would be a dream. Like I would like if you told me that 
no, we should like where it's like I get to just be a pod, like be uh that's my dream, like being a podcaster with like one of my best friends, like a yeah. I mm-hmm. guess please. Like yes, yes please. Yes, and, <laughs> yes, but they cause the and again where it's like obviously and that is what I have found interesting because you tell me, like, I personally don't know of any women podcasts that are daily yet again maybe like you tell me if you know of any but honestly I feel like in the male do- like I feel like I have seen mm-hmm. Brennan literally had like so the Pat McAfee show does it Pat yeah. also has like, has a gambling one as well which okay to be honest like I'm like I feel like I don't know sports betting at all but I'm like I've joked with Brennan I'm like but I could have figured it out I, fi- I was like I need to tap into that market for women like the nobody like there needs to be an app and my sister and I've discussed this nobody take this I'm gonna come for you if you take this idea um, but we've talked about how like there should be a sports betting app for women and like because there's not and that is a missing again I don't know much but like if we could market it to women in like terms of Taylor Swift or like and this is what I've told Brennan where it's like I know it's silly but like where it's like seriously like based on the uniforms and like oh like in terms because like I've he's taught me the term parlay like I don't know if you know mm-hmm. that but for those of yes, you who don't Brian know a lot it and I'm like Wait, I google all the time I'm like, what is <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, it's like a parlay is like where you're betting on like maybe like three games at a time where it's like they all have to hit and like you get it or like get whatever your bet is. And I'm just like, again, it's kind of nice having a husband who's like into it where I'm just like, okay, I'm going to learn it through you, I guess. Yeah, Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I love that. Okay. But also I've talked to the Harmony about this before. So of course, group chat coming to life, but uh-huh. I need an app that's similar, but for like, so maybe we have like subcategories in the app, but I okay. want it on weddings because I want a sports bet on the, like a wedding I'm going to like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. tell me, like, tell me they're going to pick a cliche first dance song. It's fine, but like, let me bet on it. Um, you know, let me decide at what moment, like, something crazy is going to happen. Bridesmaids, are we doing same color? Are we doing a different style? Different, yeah. Like, I need to <laughs> kind of know, like, if it's like that. Um, is the know, groom I, gonna cry? Is he yes. gonna cry, or is he not yeah. gonna cry? Yep, on the first look. Yep, that's important, and. Yeah, I just need to know, like, I, I just need to, like, place these bets on these things because I think that that is so funny. And I need to just gamify being a wedding guest. I think, you know, wedding yeah. wedding markets are huge for the bride and groom, but I would like to capitalize on it for the wedding guest because, you know, it's big for us, too. Like, I think now <laughs> it's like, of course, I definitely, you know, put people through my wedding as well but now that I'm like in my season of life where everyone I know is getting married I'm trying to gamify it in that way so but I think it would be really fun like I would I would like to know like all these different like things and I think I would be really good at betting even though I've been doing it for the weddings we've attended and I've done bad but I see that would be such a cool like I would have paid for that at my wedding like that was that like if that app would have been a thing like because Mm -hmm. of Brennan's personality like his friends like I feel like our guests would have felt like had so much fun and again when we're saying like betting where it's like I like maybe it's not money but like there's just different things and it's just like I like what I've like realized is again with um with sports betting it's like they like I understand like where it's like you get that rush that adrenaline of like oh yeah so something I've been doing lately is so like I am here's a fun fact for you guys is I'm it it doesn't make sense but it makes sense to me but I am such a Boston Bostonian um sports fanatic where it came from like I'm from Indiana like how this even I I can't tell you like I just I think I've just always loved Boston in general and so like I love the Red Sox I love the Celtics like anyways the Bruins so Bruins and the Red Sox are probably like those are like the two my sports teams Mm -hmm. and um so like obviously Brennan's he is because his dad is from Boston 
Mm-hmm. And um, like he grew up, he's also a Notre Dame fan. I also creeped hardcore on Jessica. Are you and Ryan Notre Dame fans? Because I saw a picture. <laughs> Are you guys? I she just accepted my per personal Instagram and like I went hard in the paint. Um, yes. So Ryan is I love this for us. Okay, Ryan is the biggest Notre Dame fan I know. So he will give you guys a run for his money. And like yeah, so we're we're big fans. So I am like an adopted Notre Dame fan. No, so so I am you because so Brennan's dad went to Bo or went to Notre Dame. His oldest brother went to they are like we will have a leg like when we have children, Mm -hmm. they are Notre Dame legacy. And I'm like, wow, Mm -hmm. thanks for and Brennan's like, but I didn't I'm like, it doesn't matter. There's still a legacy, like, you know? Yeah. And like his mom went to St. Mary's. Anyways, um, so like bringing it back to sports though um so the Bruins like have been playing and Brennan likes the Maple Leafs as well mm-hmm. but um so he'll like make his little his bets but in my head like I always and not always but I normally will do the opposite of what he's he does and so when my bet in my head again I'm not doing anything where it's like it's just in my head when I win in my head I'm like ha you should have gone with what I said Right. I love that. Oh my gosh. No, that's so funny. Um, so funny. Yeah, we are Notre Dame fans for sure. So okay, I feel like there's Ryan's gonna hear that if he listens all the way to this point in the episode. Oh my gosh, we'll go like like, be like we're going there, right? Like <laughs> that's gonna be name again. Apparently, I think my father in law still has um season tickets to the hockey games. Like again, because you know, like getting like the season tickets to the football games is like mm-hmm. impossible. Yeah. Um, but no, I think we are ticket holders of the hockey. We've been to like one game, and like that's mm-hmm. why I always laugh. It, and Brennan laughs who it's is because he's like I think at that point because his dad doesn't go to many of the games but I think when you went to when Notre Dame's your alma mater and like you can say you have season tickets to whatever sports it's like a flex that you're just like doesn't matter that I don't go to many it's like I'm a season (laughs) ticket holder like come at me yeah and I'm not mad like I again I enjoy like if we still lived in any like I would be like let's go to more games um Mm -hmm. so I think it's funny yeah I love that. I love that. So fun. Okay, I'll share last thing because I know we need to cut off yeah. before we do the longest episode ever. But <laughs> in the social savvy branding, we have a lightning bolt. And uh-huh. so Tampa Bay Lightning is our hockey team, but also Tampa is the lightning capital. So hence the name. But that's why that's in the branding. If anyone ever wonders that. I feel like I shared that once when we rebranded like two years ago, but that's about it. <laughs> I just I just learned that and I love that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And I also didn't actually know that Tampa was the light. What did you say? The lightning? It's like the lightning. Ca- I don't know if it's the lightning capital of Florida or the world. I say the world, but that sounds super extreme. But that <laughs> might actually be true. Like, I, I feel like growing is up. There a lot, is there like honestly like a lot of lightning? Yes, like a lot. Yeah, it's like a thing. Like even, I mean, there's so much lightning. There's like heat lightning when it's not even raining. Like there's like storms have tons of lightning. Like things are always getting struck by lightning. It's yeah. It's crazy. I feel like I should be more concerned about this, but I'm very like it's cool. It's just oh, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, that is but, so interesting. I yeah. I can say something new today. I yes. love that. Yeah, see, guys, we said you always stay learning as an entrepreneur, but if you guys have listened this far, you are officially our new online bestie. So thank (laughs) you so much for listening to this week's episode. And of course, join Hashtag Manage Collective on Facebook and chat with us in this week's thread. We'd love to hear your thoughts about influencer trips, about Instagram and Facebook being down. And yeah, thanks so much for listening. We'll chat with you guys next week. Bye, guys. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you haven't already, hit that follow button. And if you really love us, be sure to subscribe wherever you are listening from. And if you want to be one of our online besties, you can shoot us a DM over at hashtag managed on Instagram and let us know what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. Or, you know, you could also share all your deepest, darkest secrets kidding but we mean it when we say you can shoot us a dm we love building real authentic relationships with you